Welcome to this tutorial, where we will tear a cloth object by hitting it with another object. For that we will have a simple setup of a hoarding and then throw an object to that hoarding to tear it apart. We will achieve this effect using Maya Rigid Body Dynamics and End Cloth Dynamics. So let's get started. First I will make a simple scene, where we'll have some basic models of a hoarding, to make the animation interesting. For that I'll create a polygon cube. I'll go in the polygon shelf and create a polygon cube. This cube is the base of our hoarding. So we will have it like this. Then I will create a polygon cylinder for the pole of the hoarding. Just very basic modeling. We will not go in much detail of the models, since we are learning dynamics animation. Now I will make the object for cloth. You can make end cloth only with polygon objects. So I will take a polygon plane, move it up, rotate it like this, 90 degrees. Now I will scale it to look like a hoarding. Scale it this much. And height up to this much. Move a little down. We will use it as our cloth object. Whenever you are going to make end cloth with the object, it's always better to have your face in square shape. For that I'll increase some more divisions in width. You don't have to be accurate, just as close to square as possible. I do not want to have it high poly, so I will reduce some polygons. For that I will select the subdivision height and width at once and reduce their value. Again as I said, we will have the faces to be almost square shape. So I will increase some more division height to get almost square shape. So now I will create the frame model of the hoarding, which will hold our poster. For that I will take a polygon pipe. Bring it here, rotate 90 degrees. Increase the radius. I want to use it like a frame for the hoarding. So I will change the subdivision axis to 4. Rotate it 45 degree more. We will make it to be a proper fit to our poster object. I will make the depth of the frame a little less. We need to make it proper fit, so for that I will go in vertex mode, and move the vertex so it should look like it's holding the border of the poster. So here is our basic model of a roadside hoarding ready. Maybe I will turn on show edges to see our models better. I want to concentrate only on the animation now. So I will select all of the geometry, only deselecting the cloth object. And I will keep that in a layer. Right click on the layer, add selected object. I will hide them for now. So now we can solely concentrate on our cloth animation. Here. Time is according to the number of frames per seconds like 25 frames per second. So time will be calculated as 1 second at frame 25. So after typing this code, I will click on the create button. Now if you check the bend attribute, it shows in pink color. It has been now connected with our expression. Let's minimize the expression editor and play. 
So you can see we have got animation in our tree. An expression. It will be changing the value up to infinity. No matter how many frames you have in your time slider. It will keep animating value up to the frames limit. Let's increase the frames to 5000. And we will come on very late frames and play. So you can see we still have got animation in our tree. Next we will edit our expression to change the speed of the band value. Let's open the expression editor again. We so for that, I will come here and after time, and type star button for multiply, so it's time into 10. What it will do? It will multiply the time by 10. Means the tree's animation will be 10 times faster. Click on edit button. You can see that our tree animation is very much faster than before. Because we multiply the time by 10, so it is 10 times faster. You can make it slower also. To slow the animation, we need to. Because we made the speed 10 times slower. So how much fast or slow you want your animation to be. You multiply it or divide it to make it faster or slower. I will now set the animation speed to time faster than time. This is the speed I want. Like this we can make the tree dance up to infinity. If you want more trees, there is no need to do the whole procedure again for each tree. It's quite time consuming if you want so many trees. For that we can just duplicate our tree. Tree. First select the tree, then we go and edit, then click on duplicate special options box. There we have this option named duplicate input graph. So it will create one more duplicate of the tree. As well as a connection graph also. Means the expression node will also be duplicated and connected to our new tree. So check on the option and create. So now we have two trees. And this tree is animated also. You do not need to do it. You can change everything of this tree. So like that, you can have as many trees as you want. Let's create one more tree. Select a tree. Go to Edit, Duplicate Special Options, Duplicate, Input Graph and Create. So we have got our dance. Dancing trees. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe. This object should fall down also. For that I will go in the fields menu and apply gravity. So now when we play. The object is being thrown and is falling because of gravity too. I want to throw it a little higher, for then I will give velocity and Y also. With a value of maybe 10. Now our rigid body object is thrown towards the cloth object properly. But right now there is no connection between the rigid body and the cloth object. So what happens? It's just going passing through the cloth without colliding. So to make them collide. I will select the rigid body object. And go to the end dynamics menu set. And there in the end mesh menu. I will give command create passive collider. So what it does. It will make this object to collide with every end cloth object in the scene. Now let's see what happens when we play. You can see what happens. The ball comes and now collides with our end cloth. And right now the cloth is getting stretched instead of tearing apart. We want that when the object collides with the cloth it should tear it. So achieve that, we will select the cloth object, go in the end constraint menu, and say, tear able surface. Just reset everything and click on create constraint. So now, what do we see? We have tear able surface constraint applied to each and every vertex of the cloth object. Now every vertex is influenced by the constraint.
Now, let's see what happens when we play. I will go on the first frame and hit play. Bang! The object will hit and collide with the cloth and tear it apart. To make it more interesting, I will apply a texture of movie poster on the cloth object. Apply a Lambert material. In the color attribute hit this icon, apply file, click on this folder icon, and just locate your texture. And OK. To see the texture hit 6 button. I don't need to see the end constraint in the viewport. So I will just hide them for now. For that I will select them in the outliner, and Ctrl plus H, to hide. Check off show edges too. I will make the display of the hoarding pole to on. Now the object goes and tears the object apart. We can have some more settings, to get some different motion and feel of the cloth. We will select the tear able constraint in the outliner. And go in the attribute editor. Scroll down to see the attribute, glue strength. Currently it's 0.1. I will reduce it to 0.03. And let's see what happens. I reduce the strength. The cloth is much weaker now. Let's increase the strength to 0.5. It became very much strong. Just play with the setting and have the strength according to your need. Thanks for watching.